guys, welcome to the Lightroom, my YouTube channel. My name is Chisum and I'm super pumped to have you here. If you followed the Lightroom for a while, you realize that I didn't release a video on Friday, but you'd have seen my IG, no, my YouTube short. Hopefully you saw it. And it's been an interesting couple of weeks for me. I dare say the entire year has been interesting. And interesting in every shade of interesting, good interesting, bad interesting. But my birthday was on Wednesday and it was so beautiful. I mean, I'm living in the aftermath of my birthday, if you can see. This is not my usual setup. <laughs> and you, uh, it didn't start that way. Days leading to my birthday, I was not excited about my birthday. I was actually pretty sad. And I think I was a bit worried about conference and the reasons why I was sad. So on the 18th of April, the day before my birthday, I actually just took time to confront my feelings and I asked myself, why am I so unexcited? Every other year, I'm so enthused, I'm pumped, I have a wish list, that have, you know, shoot pictures and everything. But this year, I was just like, <laughs> I mean, I did my shoots in sometime february february this year and that was because i was in nigeria at the time for a program and the person that does my shoots is my friend or the person that takes my pictures most of my pictures in general is my friend and he's in nigeria so i was like oh my boots in the same place i just do the shoots <laughs> anywho um i decided to confront why i was feeling the way i was feeling and i just realized that there were a couple of reasons first of all this is my first birthday in a different country. I, I don't stay in Nigeria anymore. Um, it's my first birthday away from my friends that I grew up with, from my immediate family that is not my husband, like my parents, my siblings. I know I went to boarding school and university and all of that, but my parents used to come to see me in the university on my birthday. So I... I looked forward to that, you know. I didn't know how much I looked forward to that till this year. And in secondary school, there were a couple of times where they could breeze in for my birthday, and it was it was lovely. And then in school, your friends are on your floor. Um, by floor, I mean like um, there's no apartments. Your room area, you know, you have your friends around. You see your friends in class. So it was just a different vibe. And then my last birthday, that's in 2022 i was not even with my baby we're in a long distance relationship so it was a very quiet solo birthday i went to what did i even do okay i think i went to i wanted to watch a movie but the movies that they were showing were boring and i just couldn't and i took ice cream as per usual <laughs> Then I went to this spa, so a while ago, our office had gifted us spa cards. So I tried to redeem it that day. Hey, long about. It's today that I decided to record videos that all the planes are flying, skis are skiing. You guys help me. <laughs> anyway, um, so they gave us spa cards in the office like months before my last birthday in 2022 so i decided to redeem it on my birthday and i went to lekki I, I used to stay in the mainland so i went to lekki i did the whole spa thingy and then on my way back lagos traffic beats the spa that i went out of my body so it was just an interesting day i remember crying at the end of my birthday because of one conversation that that's just for another day i even think i'm giving you guys the gist i gave you guys just here yeah, one of my videos on how i was talking to my babe and then he suggested um therapy i'm going to talk more about that at the, <laughs> at the end of this video but if you watched my video on um was it how we met one of my previous videos my recent videos i talked about um what happened that day so he was just talking and then he said something about therapy and what he really meant was like i mean we're getting married and it just made sense for us to have like um premarital counseling and all of that because we, we've never been married before but i just interpreted it as something else and i was just crying like something wrong with our relationship kini, 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 kini. and that's not what the man meant like <laughs> till today we still laugh about it but yeah my last birthday in 2022 was interesting um i was really sad because i was not with my babe and then this year i'm just thankful that i was with him and even though I was with him, I was still, like, really sad for days leading up to it because it's been a challenging year for me. But I'm grateful to God, honestly. And 
I saw the level of intentionality my friends back home and my family put into making me feel remembered and seen in this birthday. It was just beautiful. I've never received like a compilation of videos before on my birthday. I just see for other people, I'm like, oh, nice. But like, I'd never thought about it for myself. And it was so, it was so beautiful, you know, seeing my friends and my family wish me a happy birthday and give epistles and all of that. And then my husband, just was spoiling me back to back to back to back to back to back, to back onto his love and took me and I like it. <laughs> I'm not complaining. So at the end of the day it was a brilliant, brilliant birthday. I feel rested. I am happy and yeah now it's time for our YouTube video. So I'm going a bit personal for this video. Um I used to be a very angry person and now that I say it it may sound weird if you know me now and even if you knew me like from back then, you may not have really categorized me as an angry person, but I really used to deal with um, and struggle with anger issues back in school. I remember in just one. And so yeah, kids can be so mean, like teenagers, children can be so mean. In just one, I had a crush. <laughs> and I don't know what I was thinking. I, I didn't know any better. I was like, I was 10. I was 10 years old. She's not already doing with the crush at 10. But I was 10 years old. I had a crush on this guy. And he had his own you know, character flaws. I mean, he was maybe 11 or 10, 11. I don't know. But I can't remember. But I had a crush on him. And he, he was very mean. He was mean and rude, red guys, but like he was still mean and rude to me many times. So sometimes he would do something weird, and I would get so angry. Then my girls in class would not gather around me. I'm like, never talk to him again. Don't talk to him again. And I'm like, yes, I will not talk to him again. I pass. The next day, he would then come and be like, oh, Jason, I'm sorry for what happened yesterday. And me too, I'll say, okay, it's no problem, it's fine, I forgive you. And I'm sure those girls thought, like, I was a joke or something. <laughs> because after vexing and ranting and complaining about what this guy has done, I would then go back and, in fact, after he has apologized to me in the morning, I would bring him Ribena and biscuits in the afternoon. I... That's what I used to do. <laughs> ah, oh my God, if he watches this video. I'm not even sure if you figure out that he was the one, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> so that one happened. Then in GS2, it got really bad. I don't know how to explain. Okay, I think GS2 is grade, grade 9. I'm not sure. I'll put it in the description. I'm not sure what grade it's supposed to be. But yeah, I would... Um, in GS2, it got really bad because I would just have outbursts of anger. And it was just weird I would yell at whoever offended me at that point and as I said children are mean teenagers are weird like I, I, I just think about people's reactions when I'll flare up and they'll be hailing me like hey she was so angry she shouted this one was like ah and they'll be turning to gist but the funny thing about it is like after people have hailed me for maybe shouting down another person and just making a scene out of it I used to feel really horrible, you know. I used to feel, like, so bad. I want to apologize to the person, but sometimes I'm like, mm, they've already healed me now. <sighs> Should I go and apologize? But it was so bad. And there are days where I will wake up and practice silence. By that, I mean that I'll wake up and I'll say, today, Chisem, I am not going to talk to anybody. I am not going to do anything. I am not... I'm just going to be mute. At least when I'm mute, I will not shout at anybody. But... It's either a senior, a senior student in secondary school will come and bully my space off the line to fetch water, or they would ask me to iron their clothes with my limited ironing time as a junior student. I mean, if you know the secondary school I went to, you will know that their values are great and all of that. But as I said, children can be so mean. Teenagers can be so mean. Like when I remember some things that senior students used to do then, I'm like, this is wickedness. Like it's, it, there's no, and it's so funny how we used to boast in that wickedness. Like, we will not be bragging about the punishments we've received. We'll be saying things like, ah, this senior, she told me to squat and fly my arms. This senior, she told me to uh, co-bunk. 
I don't know how to explain these terms for you, but Kobonk was like um, hanging on bonk. It was it was so weird, but yeah, that that was what um, <laughs> some of us experienced. And then we'll start to recount stories of people that we did not necessarily need, right? Um, and we'll be just talking about how they went through hell and high water in school, and it was just weird. Anyway, so every time I tried to practice silence and just basically not get angry with whatever was happening i failed woefully because somebody would just upset me it's either somebody is dragging their feet or the classes are too long and maybe the person teaching on time was let's grab that <laughs> but yeah something always happened and i always lost my call and it was just a vicious circle then one day in just we had this fellowship and that day I was just so fed up of how I used to feel struggling with anger and all of those things. And that day during the fellowship, I just went to a particular chair while the fellowship was going on. And I just knelt down there and I poured out my eyes out to the Lord. I think that was one of the moments that I can categorize in my life as heartfelt prayer because I genuinely just poured out my heart to the Lord and told him how I was feeling, told him, um, how scared I was with this issue I was having. I didn't want to turn out to be a messed up adult or somebody that would not have good friends because of an anger issue or something like that. And I really genuinely prayed about it. And to be honest, I don't know when the change exactly began, but that day was was surely a hallmark event for me because from that day, I think the speaker said something about, speaker at the fellowship said something about reading a psalm, a book of psalm, oh sorry, a chapter of the book of psalms and a chapter of proverbs every day. And trust me, I finished proverbs in that moment. And the verses that stood out to me the most were verses that talked about anger and how someone who expresses their anger in a certain way is a fool and things like that and how it's wise to keep your mouth shut in certain situations. So those things just sat with me and I used to meditate on it a lot in that period and slowly but surely I got better and as I advanced as I grew in school grew as a person and just began to understand more and more my life in Christ it became better for me I started to see more reasons why I shouldn't have outbursts of anger I started to learn things like patience perseverance and things like that I started to practice with people around me because trust me your siblings will text you, they will test you, your best friends will test you, your spouse, your whoever, the people that are closest to you have the most capacity to upset or hurt you because as someone rightly puts it, you can't step on someone's stoves if you're not working close to them, you know, so um, that's something I had to realize and I started to grow in. And I'm really grateful because for everyone that know me now, um, I sent a newsletter like a couple of weeks ago and I talked about how I raised my voice at someone and someone replied to the newsletter and said she could not imagine me raising my voice. And to be honest, I can't remember when last I raised my voice, but there was a time where that was chisom steady, <laughs> you know, but I'm so grateful to God for change. Now, if I'm upset, I'll just keep quiet. Just... It wasn't always that way. So yes, I'm just really, really glad that I have walked through that phase and I want to share with you some helpful tips if you're dealing with anger or a character issue, whatever it is, I believe that something I would share will be able to help. And if you want me to share something more specific to you, let me know in the comment section or you can reach out to me directly. Um, but first, if you're dealing with a character issue, it's important that you acknowledge it. Living in denial would not help you or help anyone because it's horrible. And it's it's funny how in this our generation, we now like to excuse bad behavior based on trauma. I know that some things that you deal with are based on trauma, like for instance, some people that are angry is probably based on something that they had experienced in their childhood or something that they did not fairly understand. Um, some people that struggle with um, one thing or the other is probably an insecurity that they are dealing with, right? But it's not enough, it's not a good enough excuse to have a bad behavior. It's not a good enough excuse to have 
a bad character like it it just oozes out of you everybody can see it and if no one is telling you a bad character will block you out from the right rooms so you you want to fix that you know so acknowledge it know that this is something that needs to be worked on it doesn't and it shouldn't define you so acknowledge it and when you acknowledge it at the extent of what the issue is because for some people it's just that like you have minor outbursts and then for some people when they are angry they use all manner of expletives i'm going to do an aa i'm going to do um a special video on expletives but that's for another day um so some people when they are angry they break things so you need to figure out the extent of your anger and that will just help you dealing with it then you also need to like trace out what are my triggers why did i start feeling this way when did i start feeling this way what caused this you know try as much as possible to dig deep and realize what goes on so what makes me angry is it when i see somewhere dirty is it when someone yells at me is it um something that i experienced in my childhood right why do i get angry when people yell at me is it because i was yelled at uh, yelled at a lot as a child i need to really figure out like what is causing this why is it such an issue you know and then when you do when you do figure that out allow god i can't I can't explain how important this singular point is because it has really changed my life. In that period I consumed books, messages, I prayed about it. And there was something I learned from Joyce Mayer um some years ago. So if you she was explaining it this way, if you're dealing with a particular issue, meditating on scriptures that speak directly to that issue really help. And I give an example of how I did that with my anger issues at the time. So I allowed God infiltrate that issue. I didn't hide it from him. So when I'm praying, I don't come pretending like I have it all figured out. Sometimes I'm praying and I'm weeping and I'm crying that this is how I feel. I feel stuck. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to fix this. And God would definitely meet you where you are when you humble yourself before him. Don't pretend like you have it all figured out. I mean, he knows, so you could as well be honest and just talk to him about it. Allow him. And sometimes allowing God is in listening to sermons. It's in it's in confessions because sometimes you just have to say, Hi, I'm good. Yeah, so <laughs> sometimes you just have to, like, confess who you are i am spirit-led i am self-controlled i am temperate and all those things sometimes you just have to go back to back to back on confessions and then pray these things to your reality it's such a tangible thing i remember a while ago in school okay that's actually now a long time ago like i think five years ago when i was in university at some point in university i used to struggle with forgiving a particular person now she did not directly offend me she offended someone i loved so i i was upset with her right and i kept saying weird things like oh i cannot like if they ever paired me up in a room with her she's the only person i would apply for a room change for and that was so petty because i find it really hard to dislike people but for her, for some weird reason, I was just so upset with her because of the gravity of what she did. I don't know. But one day when I made that petty statement and I was making it to my close friend, like not on social media or anything, the Holy Spirit just corrected me that the same sacrifice of Jesus that saved me is the same sacrifice of Jesus that saved her. So I am not any better, you know. And in that moment, when I was praying that day, I kept pacing the floor and I'm like, Lord, I let go. I forgive just the same way you forgave me. And slowly but surely, I, I got over it. It got better. I could now have, like, decent conversations with her. I'm not saying I became, like, her best friend or her confidant or anything like that. But we were civil. I could hear her name in a place and not get upset or riled up or anything. And that's a piece you don't want to derive yourself of, you know. So, the last point I will share is seek help and help in two ways the first one is therapy <laughs> back to my therapy story therapy is not a bad thing like 
sometimes you don't even know the amount of trauma you've dealt with till you talk to a certified person that okay this is how i feel and then person starts to break it down for you there's a reason they train these people and thankfully in the christian space more um pastors more counselors are getting certified are getting better trained to be able to provide beyond scriptural help for people that go through things and that's what a great thing but if you don't have like a spiritual figure that can thoroughly counsel you to your trauma medical counseling is not wrong you know sometimes you need to really deep deep and figure out what the issue is if you are struggling with what we know today as clinical depression there is nothing wrong with you seeking medical opinion on it and i'll talk more about that in a separate video if you want me to do that let me know in the comment section but seek help seek help if you need to talk to a counselor if you need to talk to someone experienced in that space seek help another form of help i want you to seek is spiritual accountability so if you have access to your pastor or a leader in your church reach out to the person and explain that this is what i'm dealing with i would like you to hold my hand through this because as believers we're not designed to grow in isolation some some habits that you pick up right are because you are surrounded with certain people it's the same way if you surround yourself with people that have figured out this thing you're struggling with you'll be a better time and you'll be several times um um in a better space to figure that out so it's not a bad thing it's you don't you are not doomed if you're struggling with something so reach out and seek help and pray about it because it is true that some people are not as trustworthy as they may seem on the surface. Some people will use your matter and turn it to billboard or use you as an example in teaching or things like that. I've heard a lot of things and seen a couple of things and they are not they are not they are not cool, you know. So I pray about it. If you need to ask questions, ask questions. But by all means don't struggle on your own, you know don't struggle on your own this has been a great video for me i want to sincerely apologize if you could hear birds chipping in the background i think that's a nice background effect by the way if you could hear people around on me shouting <laughs> i can't control people's reactions out here and i have to make this video because i have to make it now but yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what struck you the most about this video. Let me know what you learned, unlearned. Um, just let me know in the comment section. And if there's something you want me to zoom in on, a topic you'd like me to discuss, something you'd like me to just address, please let me know. I would love to do that. Thank you so much for watching my video this far. If you've not subscribed, side eye to you. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, share this video with someone who needs it. And leave a comment please let me know if this has met your need or if you would like me to answer any further questions so see you in my next video bye bye